So I've been getting massively into my shrimp tanks recently and that's mostly due to the fact that I'm getting great success. Uh, I've got a couple in this racking system behind me. They're just breeding and they're just, oh, they're awesome. So let me take a step back. So this down here, this is my main breeding tank. This one is producing different colonies for me of different colors and they're all mixed in together and it's a big job lot and I love it. Now up here, same again, a job lot, but I went for more of an aquascaped look. Not completely though, because you know, there's lots of open bits. Shrimp wise, look, we've got some of the awesome yellows down there. We've got some Rileys there. Red Riley. We've also got a load that are buried as well. There's one right, there's a sun-kissed orange at the back there that's buried. Buried means it's got eggs underneath it. It's ready to have some little baby shrimp going on in the tank as well. Yeah, and down in this one, we've got black Sakuras there. Sakuras, Sakuras. We've got blue jellies. Um, we've got blue dreams. And we've got shrimplets dotted about as well. I think you can just about make one out on that uh, on those rocks there a little red one yeah anyway over here look in this little jar here i've actually got about 10 more i've got 10 of the rileys again but these are carbon rileys is it riley am i saying that right i kept saying rally before it's not spelt like that so it's spelt r-i-l-i riley i'm going with that yeah here they are look absolutely gorgeous little shrimp and loads of them have got eggs as well which means like the colony's already off to a flying start. Now, obviously there's something missing as you can see. Oh, down the bottom here, look, these are all my sort of plant grow out tanks. They're not for fish or anything like that. But yeah, going back to the top, there's something missing over here, look. We've just got this tank. I think it's about 45 centimeters by 25 by 25. I don't know what the stats are on that. I'll put it up on the screen. We've already got a tiny little Nycru filter thing, which is, more than adequate i mean it's not you know expensive it's just a budget thing but they do the job well i've got a budget one in there as well that one's not so budget but it's not crazy expensive either this is like a proper sort of shrimp one i don't know why it's proper but it is okay it's got bio balls and stuff yeah this is just your basic sponge little internal filter but it'll do the job nicely now whenever i buy shrimp the first thing i do is bring them home put them in that jar like you've just seen and I, they probably stay there for a good week's two weeks you know until I get like a proper setup for them unless I've already got one of course now, the most I've ever left some for was in a little bowl I had and I left them for a month and I had babies everything was going amazing I did like regular water changes obviously because there was no filter initially after a while I had enough floating plants like in that one where I didn't even need to do that just topping it up I had a whole colony going on in there and it didn't even have a substrate. Just like you can see in this bowl here where they're breeding and doing really, really well. Oh, I should really water this plant as well. It's not dead yet. Woohoo, there's hope for you, my friend. So yeah, what I'm thinking as a bit of a sort of test, I guess, is no substrate at all. So in this one, we've got Aquasaur. This one, we've got Aquasaur. Oh, this is my axle rod tank, by the way. Axle rod Prosporas. They're not shrimp. They're just teeny tiny little fishies. There's no filter in this apart from the of, of plants. But yeah, I just thought I'd let you know that. But yeah, going back to this tank, I think I'm going to do it completely substrateless. I'm going to do like a cool little island, like an aquascaped island, but without a substrate and just see how we get on. It might be a complete recipe for disaster, but I just want to try it out. So I've picked out a few pieces of hardscape that I think I want to use. Um, the, uh, most of this here is elderly stone. And look, where I've used it before, it's got a really cool sort of aged look. Like this piece here has even got like algae already on it, which is perfect obviously for a shrimp tank because that's what they graze on. Well, biofilm as well, but algae, all of it, you know. I don't really know what these pieces are. They're like, they're like the elderly, but it's more sort of smooth, maybe elephant skin or something like that or millennium stone i'm not sure but it all ties in quite nicely if i'm honest it doesn't all have to be perfectly the same does it this is redmore root and i want to use this as well it's going to work perfectly in the corner and i can build all of the rocks around the base area there now thinking about how a tank is sat if if we're going to do a triangular composition we want it to come from that corner because then the open space is more where you're going to sort of be i don't know looking into that like you wouldn't come around here because like I can't get round there, so you wouldn't be looking from that angle. You'd always be looking from this side. So I want the triangular composition to start back there and come this way, which means I'm just gonna move this over to here where there's not gonna be anything anyway. They won't like 
hurt the view. So it is a new month and we have got new merch, electric blue Acara merch. You guys are always saying how much you love my electric blue Acara. Um, so I just thought, well, let's just make some merch, mainly because I wanted it. But yeah, if you guys are interested, want to buy this, I'll leave a link to my shop up there somewhere and down in the description, pin first comment. Take a look at my site, there's plenty of other stuff to look at as well. Yeah, if you fancy it, pick one up. Other than just watching the videos, buying merch is by far the best way to further support the channel, if you want to, that is. And it's a win-win because like, you get something cool out of it as well. Yeah, anyway, links below and above and everywhere if you're interested. There we go, I mean, I could have just taken that out completely, but it's gonna be there, isn't it? So I might as well keep it in now. Right, let's get that wood in first and see how that sits. Not got a huge amount of room to work with here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see this working. I can see it working straight away. So that's too high. I want it more angled than that, but obviously I'm gonna have rocks underneath as well, aren't I? So if I just sort of imitate it. In fact, I'll snap that little piece down there and that'll just allow us to do the angle we want without it sitting so sort of high. It's not too high, I guess. Yeah, there we go. I think that's more like how I want it. Obviously raised up a little bit on those rocks. Let's get those in now and see how we're looking. Right, yeah, so that's just, you know, fiddling around with the scape, and I like how it is. I think I want it just like that, but just up, up a little bit like that as well, which means I'm gonna to need to put some gravel underneath that area there. I'm just gonna use coarse gravel, and the reason I'm gonna do that is because the shrimp seem to love big pieces of gravel like that there, the mineral rock, to sort of climb on and climb in between. So if I use a coarse gravel, it means that there's gonna be loads of gaps in between it all, and uh, it will just sit nicely underneath there and it won't flood into the foreground or anything like that either, so that'll work well. Now down here, look, I've just got a little pile of driveway gravel, and I can use that, ideal. Right, so I collected up all of that coarse gravel, and then I remembered I had this stuff as well. It's like a, like a river one. That'll work beautifully. I mean, it needs a good wash, obviously, because look at my hands now, but yeah, that on the bottom, that on top, should, should work. Okay, I think that's working really nicely. And um, one of the things I do want to do though, is tie a big piece of rock, or glue a piece of rock to the back of this, because it's just gonna float up. It's never been in water. It will get a fungus all over it in the first couple of weeks, and the shrimp will hopefully eat that off. If not, I'll just rub it off. <laughs> but yeah, I still want a little bit more angle as well, just like that way more rather than that way. So I'll just need to snap a little bit more of those twigs at the bottom. That's what's keeping it upright. Um, put the rock on the back and then, we can get planting. <laughs> it's odd, isn't it? It looks odd. There's nothing there. Hopefully when the water's in there, it should look like mirror-like. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, there we go. Look, I just snapped it. That's far better. We've got like 45 degrees. Just works, doesn't it? I think this could work, you know. It should look pretty cool. Yeah, here it is, look. So that's the back end of the wood. I'm just gonna place that little rock on the top like that. And then I'm gonna use the cyanoacrylate super glue gel that I always use, completely fish, shrimp, plant safe, blah, 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 blah. and just glue it on the contact points. Um, it it dries within hours um, to be able to move it, but it doesn't go solid for about 24. So yeah, ideally do this the day before, then crack on. I'm impatient, so I'm gonna just wait till it's, you know, like tacky and kind of stuck. 
go and have some breakfast and then come back, put it in the tank. <laughs> right, well, that's the fastest sort of setup I've ever done. <laughs> I really like it though. I don't know. I don't know why. It doesn't look incomplete. To, actually, that's a lie. It's not bothering me. That there's no substrate. The open space there feels like it needs something. So I quite often do this. Look, let's put one little stone out here somewhere. Let's find the right angle. Is that the right angle? No, I like that angle. Following on from that one, look, and then it gives us a something else to plant to, and b it just fills that sort of area as well and it might entice the shrimp to be out there a little bit more. I don't know. I like it anyway, and it's a great little point to stick stuff to. I want loads of boost of philandra in this tank. Let's just go nuts. A boost of philandra tank. Carbon rally boost tank. Yes. So that is a decent amount of plants, isn't it? I mean, they're not cheap, but you probably want to use half of that if you want to keep costs lower. But they're such a good plant that I think it's worth, you know, spending a cash on them. And now we need to take off as much of this rock wool as possible. Breaks away quite easy, look. I'm actually being really lucky with this one. It's all coming off. There'll still be some left. There we go, look. See, that stuff's still got the roots. You don't want to keep the roots, so I like to use a fork. I mean, you can use a uh, pair of tweezers or something like that if you want to as well. But the fork works well, look. There we go, look how beautiful that is. A couple of dodgy bits in it. I'll run it under the tap just to get some of that old matter off. But yeah, so nice. So that's all the booses prepped. I've made a hell of a mess. <laughs> recyclable, recyclable, we're all good. These ones are heavy plastic, so I take them to the heavy plastic recyclable uh, once a week with the rest of the stuff from the household and that. But yeah, these look so good. I can't, look, Kadanga. This is Kadanga, and that's just amazing, isn't it? Like. It's just got so many hues in there. There's the greens, obviously deep green, and then the stems have got that pinkness to them. Ah, oh, love it. And then to attach all these pieces of boost philandra to the wood, we're gonna use the glue again, the uh, cyanoacrylate super glue gel. The thing is, this is a rhizome plant, which means that there's like a hard part at the base that all the roots grow out of. So I just tend to stick it around that area and it, it just works and it just carries on growing and we're all good. So I want to clump a lot of the Kadanga in this middle section. I think it'll be really good around there. So I'm just going to obviously put the glue on there first and then I'll just press each piece up where I want it to go. I want it to sort of fill out, and I'll push that back a bit. I want it to fill out a sort of line going across. So we've got dividing areas of, of sections of plants. I know that sounds weird now, but I think it will give a really good finish. So that piece was actually glued in because there was nothing there to sort of clamp it. But for instance, some of these pieces at side here, we can just push them in between the gaps and like the leaves will lock them in place. They're not gonna float up with the amount of sort of interlocking areas, are they? So yeah, that's the Kadanga section taken care of. Underneath, I wanna put the wavy green and the red, which is also green, but hues of red, but less than the Kadanga. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna fill out the bottom section as well. Oh yeah, I'm absolutely loving that so far. I feel like I want something down here, but obviously there's nothing really to attach it to. So I've got one more small piece of the Boost of Philandra red, even though it's green. <laughs> um, and I could just push it in there, and but it would sit completely on the bottom. What I'm gonna do instead is find a little pebble or something, attach it to that so you can only see 
you know, the actual booster Philandra, then we can sit that right in the foreground like that. And I think that ties everything in really well then. Oh yeah, really, really good, love it. Now I just noticed on the floor here, look, tiny piece that's just fallen off. We don't wanna waste it, do we? It's a cute little one, really healthy. I'm thinking, we'll just glue it in that tiny little section there. And then it's just a little piece of interest. Does that work? Let's have a little look. Yeah, why not? <laughs> it's just a happy little accident. So far so good. I want to add in another plant as well. This kind of goes with Boost Flange, this sort of group of plants that look great together and it is Hygophila pinnatifida. Can you see that? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So it's like a cool ferny type plant. Now it has like a rhizome, just like the plants we've got there, so it doesn't need to go into the substrate at all. We can just push it in gaps at the back and it'll grow quite tall and actually grow out the top of this tank as well, which would look awesome. And what's quite awesome is the plant is actually already sending out runners so it sends these out and they shoot up again in a different area this is one that i just broke off because i didn't realize um, but it's fine because i can just break it there like that and we've got another plant we can put that in another area brilliant really looking sweet now. I want to add in some more of this gravel though, just to run the bottom edges, just to sort of border it all and um, break it up from being such a harsh line. I think that'll work well with the no substrate. Oh, that's looking so good. Right, I'm just gonna fill it up now. Maybe that's all the plants, but I might still add in just a sort of few sprigs of some stems in the background just to help with water quality and that sort of thing. See how it looks. If I do, they won't be there long term. They probably will, what am I talking about? <laughs> we'll just see how it looks. Well, isn't that just the cleanest fill up you've ever seen? Now, I know it's gonna annoy some of you that there's a slight down thingy. <laughs> Basically what I'm trying to say is that the uh, whole shelf ever so slightly flexes into the middle. There's nothing to worry about. I've had more than this up there before actually and it's all fine, don't worry. I actually added extra wood to what came with, the, with this, uh, with this, what's it called, racking system. So it's double as thick. We're all good, don't worry about that. This, you can barely notice it anyway, can you? It's not something that annoys me, so whatever. Uh, anyway, so like I said, some, um, some, we want some stem plants in the back there and I'm gonna use these ones here that I've got in this tank, I've got some rice fish here, we're gonna be doing something with those soon, but we're gonna use these here. There we go, look, just subtle, it's just sort of slightly adding in a bit more to that triangular composition. Nice open area here, I think it looks great. Probably wondering, well, where are those stems gonna get the nutrients from? Don't worry, they'll grow from the water column. There'll be nutrients in the water column, just from feeding the shrimp, the shrimp mess, snail waste, that sort of thing. So there'll be plenty for that small amount. Other than those stems, the rest of the plants are slow growing. So you don't need loads of nutrients in the tank like this. Now there's no way we could do this with no filter. We haven't got enough substrate, we haven't got enough plants, all that. So we're gonna need to put our filter in now. And I've got a little cute one. Right, so we have the Nikru MagiJet filter. I don't know, why is it MagiJet? What's, why is it magic? It's just a filter. Okay, we got cute little brush there, liking that. I can actually use that for other applications as well, like filter cleaning and stuff. Keep that. Instruction manual, you know the rules. This thing, I can't open this one-handed. 
like we've got bits but oh my goodness I've just actually noticed the filter look at that <laughs> it's so cute how we're we looking inside a little bit of filter floss all we really need to be honest we just need to push the water around a little bit and a little bit of a uh, beneficial bacteria to colonize this so that's ideal don't know what that is right angle bend right angle bend thingy aha and the thing I actually want the spray bar awesome so I do like a little spray bar it just means you can sort of dissipate that powerful flow not not that we're going to get masses of powerful flow but it just means you can spray it across the top surface and I find you get like a, a much better circular rotation of the water and it doesn't hammer all the plants and things like that okay it uh, turns out I don't have a clue what I'm doing <laughs> Do you know what, I have to say, very impressed with the flow, just the right amount, I wouldn't want any more than that. In fact, it can afford to slow down a little bit as it you know, collects particles, to be honest, because it's only a little shrimp tank, doesn't need a ton of flow, but absolutely perfect. Very impressed, Nycrew, nice job. It's a clean design and you know it hasn't got horrible colors on it. It's nice and small, but it still packs a punch. I'll leave a link to this down in the description for you guys as well, if you're interested. I think that's gonna be my go-to nano filter from now on. I don't think it'd be enough for say a two foot tank like there, that's two foot, that's one and a half foot. I think that's about the limit of that. It worked really well in a little cube as well, or you know, like one of those nano tanks, the tall ones like that, yeah. So it's now the next day, I've come in the studio, been presented with something shocking. So I've come over to see how, you know, all the shrimp tanks are getting on, looking good, looking good, turned, Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, it's, it's probably shocking if you've not seen it before, but I know what it is. It's the wood releasing tannins into the water and it just goes all sort of weird and murky. It's simple to fix though, quick water change. There we go, all crystal clear again. Now we might find we need to do that a couple of times before it stays like perfectly clear like that. Not a problem, it doesn't take long. I don't know why, this particular piece of wood seems to have let off more tannins than usual, but it's just regular Redmore root, so yeah, not sure why. So we are basically ready for our first shrimp. Now you might be wondering, well, what about cycling the tank? Well, I like to do like fish and shrimp in cycles. Basically, there's gonna be so little bio load in there with about 10 little shrimp. Uh, I'll be doing daily water changes for at least a couple of weeks. Now, they're never going to get any toxic levels of nitrite or ammonia or anything like that in there because we're doing those water changes every day. Now, after about two weeks or so, the tank would have naturally cycled itself and we'll be just flying along. Now, if you're not willing to do water changes every day like I am for new tanks, then don't do this. Go for your regular tank cycling method. You can look it all up online. Now, since we started building this tank, I've actually been and got more shrimp. So I've bought um, some really nice super red cherries here are the carbons, I've got actually a few more. So we've got like about 15 now. Um, at the back here, we've got blues, uh, blue dreams. And then in here we've got, uh, well, let's take a look closer so you can actually see them. Cause these are absolutely stunning. So these are orange Riley shrimp. Like look at that, they've got like the white stripe in the middle, orange top and bottom. I cannot wait to do a setup just for them as well, but this is gonna be so cool. Yeah, I'm keeping them all in these, uh, vases and bowls <laughs> basically I just do water changes every day like 50% of that out 50% back in takes two seconds to do and they're all absolutely fine because there's no substrate so we have to do those water changes or the, the levels of waste and that will build up but it's about these ones here the carbon Riley shrimp here so these are moss balls that we've got of them I think it'd be a good idea to transfer those over to the tank as well because they've been in there a couple of weeks of these now and they're going to be like full of beneficial bacteria as well You know what, they actually look really cool. I do love a good moss ball, don't you? Which aren't actually moss, they're like a form of algae, but they, you know, let's not split hairs here. I mean, even that one, it looks like a mushroom growing in the middle of the shrimp playground. And then I've used them over here as well in the shrimp forest. Look, I could, you can open them out, put them kind of flat and then glue them to things. And they just, they just look so good, don't they? So soft, you just wanna squeeze them. 
<laughs> but yeah, down here, look, here now are all the Riley shrimp. And this is hornwort. It grows like, you know, an absolute weed. I'm not worried about keeping that. You just put that aside. <laughs> oh, now I feel bad for the hornwort, but you, you shall live on. I'll put them in the other tanks. So the other thing we need in the tank, of course, which is really good for shrimp, shrimp health, is katapa leaves. So I have got more of these over here. There we go, fresh ones. And they are, you know, they're, they're not gonna sink. So what I like to do is just glue a little pebble to them and then they'll just go straight to the bottom. I'm really, really liking that. It looks so good, doesn't it? Right, let's get those shrimp in. Okay, I've collected up all, calm down, calm down, calm down, there we go. I've collected up all the carbons. Um, actually, it was quite interesting, There's quite a few mulks down there as well in the few days they've been in this uh, jar thing. So I also like to put in snails as well. So I'm gonna put some snails in there ready to put them all in together. Now I've already got a ton of them down here. I've just fed this tank, so they're all collecting there. Now, just like before, it's exactly what I did with this tank as well, the forest shrimp aquarium. Pinched a few from the playground, put it up here. So it just works. Snails and shrimp, they just go together like, like something that goes together well. <laughs> so it's just gonna take a few out and add them to the mix. Some of those are sort of caught in a whirlpool at the moment. Um, they'll be fine, they'll just find a place in a minute. They'll latch on. He's trying to reach out, look, he'll be fine. Should we help him? Come over this way. There you go. There we go, we're all good. Oh, there's that one down there still going for a trip, but come on, buddy. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you. Grab hold of something, please. Right, so the Riley straight away, look, they, they stand out massively and they look absolutely great against that sort of no substrate, don't they? This one's straight in the food bowl, obviously very hungry <laughs> so because they've only just jumped in they're going to be a little bit sort of stressed out for a little bit jumping around everywhere oh, look that snail's doing well yes look at this we've got loads of them oh this is going to be so cool it'll be wicked if they can just keep breeding heavily um, it's not a massive tank so what i'll probably have to do is as the numbers increase i can sort of transport them into other aquariums but that is the whole point of this breeding program anyway but to be honest knowing me what i'm going to do is just keep them all to themselves and never put them in harm's way of any fish <laughs> and of course one last thing to add to the tank the same as i've got in the other ones the floating plants i like to use the mini water lettuce um, you can use duckweed or salvinia whatever you want this is a mix of duckweed and mini water lettuce which is really annoying <laughs> i didn't want the duckweed in there but you know it is so this side's just salvinia see so yeah i think i'll just put a couple of sprigs or plants or whatever of the mini water lettuce straight across. You won't even see it, to be honest, because it's gonna be over in the back corner there, but it'll be really good for improving water quality. 